Persuasion is an art, but in order to get people to change, they have to be motivated to change. From the presidential election to a sham wow commercial, motivating people to change their minds or behaviors is based on two main assumptions. The first of these assumptions is that all people have needs. The second is that people can be persuaded by claims to satisfy their needs. For your final speech, you are required to prepare a speech that seeks to persuade not just people's minds or hearts, but also their actions. Persuasion is no easy task because people don't change for no reason. They have to feel like they have a personal need that will be met before they will even consider changing their mind or ways. So the burden lies on you, the speaker, to craft a speech that motivates people to act. But don't worry, if you follow a tried and true method of persuasion, your job of persuading an audience is much easier. This method is known as Monroe's Motivated Sequence, and the sequence consists of five steps. This method has been used since the 1930s and is probably the most effective way to get people to take action. Well, it's probably not as effective as forcing someone to do something at gunpoint, but the motivated sequence is much more ethical and shouldn't get you arrested. So let's take a look at the five steps and how they can be used when preparing a persuasive speech. The first of the motivated steps is attention. In this first step of Monroe's motivated sequence, you must get the attention of the audience by creating interest and desire to know more about the problem or need you will be presenting. In persuasion, the attention step is a bit different than what you've learned about as the hook for your other speeches. A hook just needs to get the audience's attention. The attention step of a persuasive speech needs not only to get the audience's attention, but more importantly, draw attention to the need or problem that you will detail in the second step of your speech. Therefore, the second step of Monroe's motivated sequence is need. In this step of your speech, you will show that the need or problem about you, which you are speaking is significant and won't go away by itself. The problem you're setting up should be stated in negative terms and credible evidence should be used to demonstrate that this is a real and often widespread problem. The burden of proof in this step is great and yet oftentimes students skimp on this step because they mistakenly believe that stating the problem is enough. But it's not. You have to, like a lawyer, build a case about this problem, looking at your problem from many different angles. Remember, if a person doesn't believe that something is a need that actually affects them, they will never act to change the problem. That is why you must prove that there's a problem and relate that problem to your audience. The third step of Monroe's Motivated Sequence is to satisfy. In this step, you need to provide solutions to the issue. To do this, you will need to provide a plan of action which will alleviate the problem and satisfy the individual's interests, wants, or desires. These solutions can be ones that the government, communities, schools, organizations, businesses, and other people groups should take to solve the problem. Think about this question. What are all the ways that this problem can be solved? The answer to that question should be implemented into your satisfaction step. Remember to think outside the box in this step. Don't just rely on obvious solutions that the audience with a little bit of logic could come up with on their own. In this step, you should also address any objections your audience will have to what you propose. This is a way that you can look at both sides of the issue so that you don't appear one-sided, but rather logical. Anticipate these objections and address them when you provide your solutions. The fourth step in Monroe's Motivated Sequence is visualization. In this step, you will give a verbal depiction of the world as it would look if your plan is put into operation. There are two ways to do this. Show your audience members how great the world would be if they do what you ask, or show them how terrible the world would be if they don't, or you could do both. You have appealed to your audience's logical side by using statistics and numbers in the previous steps of Monroe's Motivated Sequence. Now you can appeal to their emotions and desires. Because people are moved more by more than just words, it also helps to be visual and detailed in this step. So paint a picture for your audience and help them to visualize what you propose. The fifth and final step in, of Monroe's Motivated Sequence is action. In this step, you will tell the audience what actions they can personally take to solve the problem. This is your speech's final call for personal commitments and actions based on what you've shared. Remember, people don't get, like to get outside of their comfort zones and spend their own time solving the problem you've presented, so be sure to make the action steps easy on them. For example, if you're asking your audience to take action by writing their legislators about the unfair state cuts and school funding, 
Provide your audience with a pre-written letter that they can sign and send to an address you provide them with. Or give them a link that they can go to a pre and send a pre-written email. Or let's say you're trying to convince an audience to act on the problem of blood bank shortages. Making an action step easy for this topic um, may be pro to provide them with a business card with local bank centers on it and contact information printed on them. Or what if you were trying to convince your audience to become an organ donor when they get their license? Maybe you provide them with a brochure detailing what is required to become a donor, including links to Michigan.gov or to forms that they can fill out to become an organ donor. Considering your audience's time and commitment is important when you're asking them to act. Now that you understand the steps of Monroe's motivated sequence, let's apply it to one of the examples we've just talked about, blood dono donation. Let's say you've prepared a speech urging your classmates to join a blood donors association. In the attention step, you may tell a story about a person who needed an emergency transfusion following a car accident, didn't get it, and died. In the needs step, you may present all the stories, statistics, and facts about how blood drives seldom collect enough blood of all types to meet emergency needs in the area that we live in. In the satisfaction step, maybe you show how blood donors associations guarantee a predictable, steady supply of blood on the medical community. In the visualization step, maybe you prove that without the steady supply of blood, our community will face needless deaths. With it, emergencies will be met with prompt treatment. And finally, in the action steps, perhaps you urge your audience to act by filling out the blood donors cards that you pass out. Now, obviously, a lot of your own words go into the stripped-down version of Monroe's Motivated Sequence that I just presented, but those steps must be in place. So let's review. Monroe's Motivated Sequence is a technique used to motivate people to action. It involves five steps. In the attention step, you want to get your audience's attention and you want their response to be, I want to listen. In the need step, you are proving that a problem or need exists and you want your audience's response to be, something needs to be done. In the satisfaction step, you present solutions to the problem or need and you want your audience's response to be, this is what to do to satisfy the need. Next is the visualization step where you ask your audience to visualize the results of action or inaction. You want them to think, I can see myself enjoying the benefits of such an action. Finally, in the action step, you are requesting your audience to act on the problem you've presented. You want their response to be, I will do this. Remember, in order to be persuasive, make sure to accomplish these five steps in order. Also, be sure your topic is relevant to your audience, as relevant as possible, and use sound research to show the need for your audience to do as you ask. Good luck with your speech.